back to your family point to this topic is lactose intolerance uh, this is very important topic for your family examination here I will discuss the most important points in regards to your family let me start with this okay let me tell you briefly about the pathophysiology of uh, lactose intolerance this is the inability to digest lactose so lactose is a disaccharide right so it contains a glucose and a galactose so when there is a there is an enzyme in the intestine that helps to digest lactose means that helps to break down lactose into glucose and galactose okay so this is what lactase deficiency deficiency of this enzyme leads to not breaking of glucose not breaking of uh, lactose into glucose and galactose so glucose and galactose are not formed remember this okay which are the products that contains lactose high lactose is the milk and processed foods remember about this milk and processed foods pathophysiology okay you can read in the screen but please let me tell you uh, how what is actually lactose intolerance there is an enzyme intestinal lactase present in the intestine so when there is a when you drink milk so it contains a lactose so this enzyme intestinal lactase converts lactose into glucose and galactose so it is easily absorbed from the intestine suppose a patient with in, uh, lactose intolerance he does not have intestinal lactase right so when there is no intestinal lactase when he drinks milk milk contains lactose so it comes and there is no breakdown of lactose into glucose and galactose so lactose starts accumulating in the intestine when it reaches to the maximum level it starts attracting water and becomes heavy osmosis due to osmosis okay the in the bacteria are present in your colon so these bacteria starts fermenting the lactose so as a result to yield short chain fatty acids and hydrogen gas these are the bacteria that are responsible for formation of short chain fatty acids and hydrogen gas from the lactose so because of this short chain fatty acids and hydrogen gas patients will have gastrointestinal symptoms did you get me what i'm talking about okay sign and symptoms very important for you smelly what you need to remember is usually they give the history of abdominal fullness and a bloating remember they give the history that a patient came from asia from uh, because where actually they don't know the, the it has not been diagnosed as a lactose intolerance that is what you need to remember so they give the history of abdominal fullness or bloating other symptoms can be given sometimes like a diarrhea flatulence but the most important what they give in usually is abdominal fullness or bloating okay i will tell this patient with the same symptoms can be ibs irritable bowel syndrome how do you prove it tell me remember lactose intolerance disease is only disease can be diagnosed clinically it should be diagnosed clinical rather than the test tell me how do you prove it by clinical method just tell the patient to stop drinking milk if the symptoms improves then it is a lactose intolerance if it doesn't improve then it is a ibs it could be ibs so you need to do further tests right okay okay now important test lactose intolerance test very important test sometimes it is asked how it is done also but just try to remember what we are going to do in a lactose intolerance test lactose tolerance test so we may, what we do is we know the pathophysiology so we give the dose of 50 gram of uh, lactose the patient is given 50 gram of lactose overnight fasting and we start measuring glucose level why we measure glucose level because lactose is converted into glucose and galactose right so we start measuring glucose level after zero one hour and two hours okay so what we do if that serum glucose level is below 20 gram per deciliter above the baseline it fails to increase uh, by 20 gram per deciliter above the baseline then the diagnosis of lactose intolerance is confirmed milk tolerance test same milk contains what lactose right so it is not so sp specific than a lactose tolerance test so same thing we administer 500 ml of milk and measure the blood glucose level 
okay an increase of less than 9 milligram of 9 milligram per deciliter indicates lactose small absorption which is best specific test which is more specific test tell me guess no it's gonna be hydrogen breath hydrogen test okay this is very specific how it is done no need to remember the important point just now i told you that uh, because lactase lacto, uh, lactose starts accumulating in the intestine so the bacteria in the colon converts it into fatty short chain fatty acids and um, what do you call the hydrogen gas they produce and we measure the hydrogen gas from the mouth what about biopsy tell me is it not the specific yes of course it's a specific it's the most accurate test but we don't do it why it's a clinical diagnosis First, we shall tell the patient to stop all the milk products. If the patient improves, signs and symptoms improves, then it is lactose intolerance. If not, go ahead with the hydrogen breath test or lactose tolerance test. Okay, milk tolerance test, no need to remember. Just, it's not so much important. Okay, now tell me treatment. Treatment, very important. Very, very important for your assembly. Remember, pre-hydrolyzed milk, lactate, now, now it is lactates is available okay so what you need to remember is usually in the usually they won't ask you the diagnosis they will ask you the treatment they will ask you the patient about blah 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 story of uh, lactose intolerance and they will give which of the following can be tolerated by the patient so yogurt and fermented products such as cheese are better tolerated than regular milk so they give the option of yogurt and fermented products so it can be given easily so usually we think that because yogurt contains the milk, that's why it is also contraindicated or it's also not used, but that is not the case. So what you need to remember is yogurt and fermented products can be given, okay? All right. And other thing, what you need to remember is soya-based milk or food, right? Products are well tolerated. Now other point, what you need to remember here is supplemental calcium should also be recommended. Why? Because milk contains the calcium. And these patients are not taking milk regularly, not regularly, they are not at all taking the milk because of the lactose intolerance. So we need to recommend them to take calcium supplements. Okay, I hope you got the idea. In USMLE, try to remember how, what is the pathophysiology of the lactose intolerance, how the patient presents and what is the treatment plan and test. Very important. Okay, thank you so much for watching my video. Please let me know. How do you feel about this? Please do subscribe, rate and comment. Thank you so much.